Hi, this is the second part of, whoops, this is not 801. This is actually 802. Let's fix that. Uh, the second part of impulse. Uh, we're going to be doing some sample problems here. So the first problem we have is a ball of mass one kilogram is released from rest above the horizontal surface. The ball falls downward and collides with the surface with a speed of two meters per second. The average force exerted is 20 newtons over a time interval of 0.1 seconds, which of the following best predicts what will happen to the ball immediately after collision? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can solve this. Okay, so let's talk about this. We've been using this swing equation where we say that uh, the change in momentum is equal to impulse. Impulse is force times time. And the change in momentum is uh, final momentum minus initial. And we find that with... Um, mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. Well, they give us a lot of information in this problem. And what we see is that I can solve for impulse because I have 20 newtons and I have 0.1 seconds. So if I do 20 times 0.1, that's going to give me uh, 2 kilogram meters per second. Here, we know that uh, the incoming uh, um, velocity is 2 meters per second, and the mass is 1. So this is going to be minus 1 times 2. And this is going to be 0, so here I have 1 times 0. So this is going to be a negative 2. Because these values are equal and opposite, that means that the collision will... Um, nullify the momentum. And so what's going to happen is the ball is going to come to rest on the surface. All right, let's look at another one. I'm gonna pause the video while I swap out my papers. All right, here's our next sample problem. A student conducts three experiments in which a card of mass M is pushed along a horizontal surface of negligible friction for 20 seconds by an applied force. The graph shows the force as a function of time for each experiment, which of the following correctly ranks the greatest change in the cart's momentum from zero to 20 seconds. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer this. Okay, so let's talk about this. <clears throat> Remember that the change in momentum is also equal to impulse. Impulse is equal to force times time. And we know that um, it's also equal to the area underneath a graph. So if I look at the um, area underneath this dotted line, I have 10 times 20 and I get a value of 200 kilogram meters per second. If I look at the value underneath the diagonal line, it's a triangle here. So I have one half base times height, and that's gonna be 200. And if I look at the area underneath the um, solid line here, the purple, uh, one half base times height, and I'll do that twice, and I end up with a value for 200 here. So it turns out that the value for all three of these is equal. All right, so those were some of the AP um, multiple choice. So let's look at a longer problem now, and it's got three parts. We're going to take a 70 kilogram person lands on firm ground after jumping from a height of three, three, <laughs> three meters. His legs move one centimeter. Calculate the impulse experience. So let's do some diagrams. And because I'm a little short of space, I'm going to do my diagrams up here. So I've got my guy and he's falling. And his motion is this way. And we're going to assume that up is positive. So our coordinate system for all of these, we're going to have um, up is positive. So there's two parts to this. We've got the falling and we've got the landing. So the landing is gonna be some collision physics. So here, and he starts here, um, make his head a little bit bigger. The legs are here. And then when he finishes, his legs have bent a little bit. So what we're looking at is a very small one centimeter. This is our start. This is our finish. And this difference is one centimeter. So he's basically experienced this impulse over this one centimeter bend in his legs. 
In order to solve this, we're going to need the physics for both of these because we're going to need his velocity when he comes into the fall. So let's kind of talk about our um, problem solving strategy here. We know we have a value here of one centimeter, um, but we don't have enough values to, to take care of either from a kinematic standpoint or for a um, uh, impulse momentum standpoint. But if I can find the incoming velocity, I can use momentum impulse for this. So I have to start over here. All right, so my kinematics for the fall, uh, my variable bank is VO, VF, YO, YF, A, and T. Uh, with a positive coordinate system, this A is gonna be negative 9.81. He is falling for three meters. So we're gonna just say that this is zero and this is three. And my initial velocity is zero. And I want to solve for my final velocity, which will be the velocity that I'm beginning with here. So uh, I'm going to run through uh, the kinematics of this pretty quickly because we've done this before. So the equation I need is VF squared equals VO squared plus 2AY. I'm going to have VF squared is 0 plus 2 negative 9.81 times 3. When I solve for this, and I'm going to do a, a camera slide here, that final velocity is going to be equal to negative 7.67 meters per second. But what we need to know is this is going to become my starting velocity. So this is part one. This is the fall. This becomes my VO for impact. All right, so if uh, you, uh, I wrote that out really quickly. If you wanna catch up all you know, your, your writing, you can pause the video here, but I'm gonna run through this fairly quickly for the interest of time. So now I know that my change in momentum, so delta P equals I, on one side I have force times time, and on the other side I have M, V final minus M V initial. Well, I know that V final is going to be zero. I know that now that my V initial is negative 7.67. So I can take, and his mass is 70. So I take 70 times zero minus 70 times negative 7.67 equals delta P equals I. When I solve this, I get a value I get that, that my delta P, which is going to be also my impulse, is equal to um, 536.9 kilogram meters per second. And this is also equal to the impulse. All right. So part B says, estimate the average force exerted by the person on the gram. Well, I solve for impulse. So I know the impulse is force times time. And I know that my impulse is 536.9 um, kilogram meters per second. And I want to solve for force, so I need time. How can I do this? Well, I can solve for uh, time kinematically. So if I do that, my variable bank, we're gonna need a variable bank, so I have a VO, VF, YO, YF, A, T. And we're solving for time. Now, remember we said we're only moving one centimeter. So my initial is zero. And we're gonna, I forgot to mention that we'll make this our zero point. We'll make the, the landing spot our zero point. That was kind of important for up here because um, to do this, I needed to uh, set that. That means my initial y, one centimeter is gonna be 0 0.01 meters and it has to be negative because I started at zero and I came down to negative. Do not, I repeat, do not make the mistake of setting this at 9.81. 9.81 meters per second squared is only when we are in free fall. So you cannot, you don't know your acceleration here, but remember you do know your velocity coming in. It's negative 7.67. So um, 
we are going to use, I want to go ahead and use, uh, I'm going to pause the video here for just a second. All right, sorry about that. I had uh, someone at my door. Um, so we also know that our VF is zero. But when I go to look at my equations, so kinematic equation one, B sub F equals V sub O plus AT. I don't have A. B sub F squared equals V sub O squared plus two AY. I don't have A. Uh, y sub F equals Y sub O plus V sub O T plus uh, one half AT squared. I don't have A. The only one we have that doesn't have A, and we don't use this one very often, is that delta Y is uh, one half V sub O plus V sub F times time. And in this case, this is the one that's going to work for us to solve for time. So um, this is going to be when I plug in my variables, I'm going to have 0 0.01 is 1 half 0 plus negative 7.67 times t. And when I do the algebra, I find that my time is equal to 0 0.0026 seconds. So now I can solve for my force. So my, um, and this is my net force. Uh, so let me back up here. Here's another important uh, designation that says net, I can't read it. But this is solving for the net force. The problem asks for the average force exerted by the ground on the person. Gosh, this problem is going long. Um, I, now I'm gonna keep it in two parts. I was thinking about whether or not I wanna do a third part. So, you know what, I, I'll just go through this and um, I'll skip part C. So when I plug in my values now, um, I have, so I bring my 0 0.0026 seconds up here. I find that my net force is equal to 206,500 Newtons. Um, so let's do a free body diagram. So I'm gonna switch colors again. Uh, what haven't I used yet? Uh, let's do pink. So if I've got a free body diagram, we're landing here, so I've got my bent legs. I've got the force that's exerted, the normal force, and I have a uh, weight, FW. And obviously the normal force is gonna be much bigger than weight, but in order to get the net force, I have to add these two up. So I know that F net is going to be equal to Fn minus Fw. F net was, let me see if I can, I'm gonna focus this too, a little blurry, uh, 206,500. I wanna solve for the normal force. And his weight is, now we're gonna use 9.81 because remember weight is your uh, uh, acceleration due to gravity times your mass. So that's gonna be 70 times uh, 9.81. And the negative is actually here. So when I solved this, it would be uh, plus 70 times negative 9.81. So the negative kind of factors in. And when I uh, do my algebra here, I find that my normal force is uh, 207,187. The reason I picked this problem and the reason I like this problem is it shows you how in physics you have to use everything. This was kinematics. This was our first chunk of change, physics change. And then we quinned to Newton's with our free body diagram. And the middle part here was momentum impulse. You had to use all of those in order to solve this problem. So just taking a quick look at C, the average force exerted by the ground if they land, land with bent knees, assume the legs move 50 centimeters during impact. Basically, you're going to repeat all of this. You're just going to change this for 0.05. And let me just give you the answers. So when you uh, solve this, you get your net force as, so for this, your net force, F net is equal to, 4,130, and your normal force is going to be uh, 4,817 newtons, and that's newtons. 
So you can go ahead and work out that part C. Again, you're just doing the exact same thing. We're just calculating it now with this. And if we were doing this in class, I would give this as a sample problem. All right, so hopefully that gives you enough that you can start working some of these momentum impulse problems. And we'll see you in the next video for open closed systems.